Please marry me. A diamond ring was presented, and I instinctively covered my mouth with my hand. I never thought I would actually react as if I were in a TV show. I was so happy, my eyes watered up. If you're okay with it, then I'd be happy to. Please don't notice my trembling voice. While thinking this in the back of my mind, I took his hand that was offering the ring. Yes! He sounded so adorable as he said this, relieved. I felt undoubtedly the happiest in my life. My name is Madison. I had achieved my childhood goal of becoming a nurse, and it felt like my hard work had paid off. I never minded not having time to go out or the lack of social encounters due to the constant studying. But before I knew it, everyone around me had gotten married, and more of my friends had children. I did want to get married, but thinking about meeting someone new and balancing that with work, it seems hard to take the first step. Maybe it would be easier to live alone forever. That's when I met Finn. I was surprised when he confessed soon after we met. But after his persistent invitations, I eventually gave in and we started dating. Even though our relationship began that way, Finn, who was two years younger than me, seemed cute and affable, and gradually he made his way into my heart. Then, He moved into my apartment, and we began living together. I found myself doing everything for him, the charmer, yet it was fun spending time together. Isn't Finn too dependent on you? Hmm, but even so, I'm happy because of it. Even if he's younger than you, you do too much for him. I had become devoted to him. So much that my friend would say this to me. Indeed, I paid the rent and all living expenses and did all the household chores. I wished to share at least half the living expenses since we lived together. And since I was also working, I wanted to share the household chores too. I was thinking, isn't this apartment too small? Could we move somewhere bigger? One day, I bravely brought up our future plans to him. Moving home. I'm the one paying the living expenses right now, right? Since you also live here, I'd be happy if you could share some of it. And the chores too. I'm sorry. Saying this, he apologized loudly and hugged me tightly. I'd been oblivious until you pointed it out. No, I couldn't bring myself to say it either, so. I would do better. I was happy to hear that and trusted his words, but time passed without any contribution from him to rent, chores, or even discussing moving. In the year or so of dating, I grew increasingly fond of him and couldn't bring myself to say anything. I feared that bringing it up again might drive him away. So I continued our life as it was. As a nurse, I earned a decent salary, whereas he, apprenticing at a small construction firm, made less, which made it harder for me to discuss financial sharing. You are already 32. Can you see a future with him living like that? My friend's remarks stung. I enjoyed our life, but was always anxious at the same time. That's when he proposed. My parents were puzzled by his financial situation, but I reassured them that I had a stable job and income. His parents, on the other hand, welcomed me warmly. Welcome! Sorry for the sudden visit. It's fine. I was looking forward to meeting you. When I visited, his mother welcomed me with joy. His father also seemed happy for us, which made me very happy. So, when will you register the marriage? 
since the wedding is in six months. I thought we'd do it then. Oh, wouldn't it be better to do it sooner? I thought so too, but... My soon-to-be mother-in-law looked disappointed, and he agreed with her. It was my childhood dream to register our marriage on our wedding day. Well then, I guess that can't be helped. I wondered why they were so eager to register the marriage. The date of the wedding ceremony was set according to Finn's wishes. I could have waited a bit longer for my preferred venue, but his desire to register the marriage sooner led to this decision. He seems to think that registering the marriage was all that mattered. So maybe my desire for a ceremony was selfish. That's why I went along with his wishes about the date. Why the rush? I just want to become a family with you as soon as possible. His words made me happy, but I couldn't fully understand his eagerness. Madison, you are a nurse, right? His mother suddenly asked. Yes. That's reassuring. Huh? You do elderly care too, right? Well, I do assist the elderly in my job. Well, that's good. She seems genuinely pleased, which gave me an odd feeling. It's nice to be appreciated for my job as a nurse, but what does she mean? How long are you planning to work at your current job? Huh? You're moving here, right? Her assuming it as a given, I was shocked. As for Finn, he just smiled nonchalantly. Well, even if you were to leave, you wouldn't be able to quit the day off, right? So you'd have to notify your workplace soon. But... Our place is in the countryside, but you'd probably find a nursing job easily. Yes, I'm glad you're a nurse. I was just listening to him and his parents happily discussing such matters. His family home was a two-hour drive from the city center. I hadn't heard anything about moving until now. Moreover, I was meeting his parents for the first time today. My anxiety grew, but I feared expressing a reluctance to live with them might give a bad impression since I had just come to greet them before our marriage. That's why I felt unable to say anything. Sorry, my friend said they want to meet up. But don't we have plans today? We can always go another time. After our engagement, it seems his cycle of local friends had grown. They said they wanted to celebrate the marriage, so although I sent him home gladly at first, it felt different when it became a weekly occurrence. I was already on a rotating shift system, so our days off rarely overlapped. Being called away by friends on the rare days we could spend together only increased my frustration. He probably wants to return to his hometown. But he told his parents you weren't planning to move back, right? He did say that, but... Being alone on my day off felt lonely, so I ended up going back to my parents' house nearby. My mother looked troubled when I inadvertently expressed my thought. Didn't his parents agree to that? Hmm. What? Getting cold feet before the wedding? The marriage certificate was already filled out, with a wedding planned for next week. The realization that I was getting closer to marriage might have been causing my anxiety. Maybe. I forced myself to accept it as that. What? Can we go together? Sorry, it turned into a final singles gathering, so I will be heading to the venue with my parents. I will meet you there. Did we say we'd go submit the marriage certificate together before the ceremony? Oh, sorry, but could you go submit it alone? There won't be much time after the ceremony because of the reception, and you should go spend some time with your parents. He said, as if advising me. 
Was I wrong to be upset about not going to the wedding venue together or being told to submit the marriage certificate I'm on? But despite his and his parents' wishes to register the marriage as soon as possible, I had insisted on waiting until the wedding day. Okay. I reluctantly agreed. However, I'd never expected to be in so much trouble. The day before the wedding, I stayed at my parents' house. The next day, we headed to the venue together, but the car broke down, significantly delaying our arrival. I had planned to submit the marriage certificate on the way to the venue, but there was no time. I have to apologize to him. While thinking this, I headed to his dressing room. Finally! It took so long! As the venue staff guided us to the dressing room, I heard his and his mother's voice inside. My father was about to knock on the door when we overheard their conversations. Now we've got a maid. Yes, it took a while. They were talking about me. Really? That woman made us wait so long. What? My parents and I exchanged glances. The venue staff looked bewildered. Nice to have a nurse close by. Now we can leave Grandpa's care to her. She earns well, so she can pay the rent and do the chores. The wait was long and unbearable, but not breaking up turned out to be a good call. Yes, indeed. Paying for daycare is costly, and I don't want to do caregiving, so it's perfect. But she doesn't want to move and says she won't quit her job. Well, isn't it cheeky for a bride to say such a thing? I know, right? She should be grateful just for getting the chance to get married. You pretending to be distressed should eventually make her agree. She'll listen to everything I say so. Once you are married, she's ours. The marriage certificate has been submitted, right? She should have done it this morning. Finally, huh? Undoubtedly, the excited speakers were my fiancé and his mother. I was so shocked that my mother had to keep me from falling. My father turned red with anger, his fist trembling. I cleansed the marriage certificate that we hadn't managed to submit. The venue staff looked at us apologetically. Let's go home. What? My father quietly said, taking me and my mother's hand and starting to walk. The staff hurried after us. We'll be leaving now. We will contact our guests ourselves. We will cover all cancellation costs too. My father stated firmly. We'll be busy for a while, so please let us handle the payment later. That's fine. I will explain to the groom's side. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. The venue staff seems to understand the situation. On my wedding day, I never imagined such a thing would happen. I was stunned as my father pulled me by the hand, and it was only then that I snapped out of my tension and started crying. Apparently, the venue staff explained the situation to Finn as he called me while I headed back home. However, I turned my phone off and apologized to my guests using my mother's phone instead. A few hours later, after returning home, he and his parents arrived. What's going on? He shouted in fury. Apologizing to the guests was such a hassle. Do you want to embarrass us? I heard you told them to cancel the wedding yourself. How selfish! Though, his voice was loud enough for the neighbors to hear. My father calmly handled them, never letting them inside. Let's pretend this marriage never happened. What? My daughter said she has no intention of marrying you. What do you mean? I won't allow such selfishness. 
You are already our daughter-in-law. His mother's voice rose high. Then she smirked. We'll forgive you this time, but you will have to pay the cancellation fees, and you will come live with us. And don't forget to quit your job too. Understanding her intent, Finn turned to us with a smile. Right, you've embarrassed us, so you owe us that much. Move in with us, and make sure to pay for rent and living expenses with your salary. Enough is enough. My father raised his voice after listening silently. My daughter is not your slave. A slave? I never said that. But I heard it. At the venue, you said you've got a maid. What? Oh, as my father confronted them, they were lost for words. You heard? Loud and clear. All your selfish talk. Finn's face turned pale, while his mother paused before laughing loudly. What's wrong with that? My son and she is married now. It's natural for her to obey us, right? Seeing her defiant attitude and him agreeing, I felt nauseous. Madison likes me, don't you? We promised to be together, right? Can't you help out a little? My parents are struggling, so I'm sure you can lend a helping hand. Taking advantage of my silence, he clung to me. Probably thinking I would easily give in, but I brushed off his hand. Don't touch me. What? I said, don't you dare touch me. Are you hungry? Forgive me. We are family now, right? Everyone makes mistakes, right? We are family, so please overlook it this time. What family are you talking about? A convenient maid? A slave who obeys every command. I threw the documents in front of them. Unfortunately, we're not family yet, so I have no obligation to obey you. What? Why is this here? This here? What? Seeing the marriage certificate in my hand, their eyes widened. I couldn't submit it because of some trouble, but I'm glad I didn't. You tricked us. You're the one who tricked me. With that, they were speechless. Please communicate through my lawyer from now on. Wait. Without looking back, I closed the door. After ensuring they were gone, I went to my apartment and find it ransacked. Relieved that I had already moved out my valuable. I suspected they were searching for my bank information. I ignored his message asking where the savings were, and so I formally broke off the engagement through a lawyer. Since the fault led with them, they had to pay a small amount of consolation and the venue's cancellation fee. Finn became uncomfortable at his workplace due to the cancelled wedding and the commotion at my parents' house. And apparently resigned to return home. His family faced disdain in their hometown, but it was their own doing. I explained my situation to my workplace, and it has become a laughable story now. I'm sometimes teased about it, but I'm actually grateful for that. Since then, I've been wary of dating, but I've started to consider going out for meals with a colleague. Who invites me with an unfazed smile every time? I can't think about marriage right now, but I plan to keep moving forward, step by step.